Hi everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, this is going to be our first concert for caregivers. Uh, we're going to have one a little later today, starting in five hours from now. Um, it's concert for caregivers. This is our first one, and we're doing this to really to shine a light on the profession of caregiving, and uh, we want to be able to celebrate all of our direct support professionals and caregivers today and be able to have a concert, have some fun. I, music is healing. Music's a part of our lives here and wanted to be able to do something to kind of give back to uh, those that are providing care for others. Uh, wanted to shed a little bit of light on my journey on how I got to this point of, of even uh, hosting a concert uh, regarding caregiving and that really has to do with my entry into the caregiving field many years ago. Um, but my journey started with uh, as a direct support professional, uh, it started with fire ants, believe it or not. I had a temporary job that I was working, uh, really cleaning up, uh, you know, uh, work, construction sites. Uh, I was hired in as a temp. I came back from lunch on the first day, and the owner said, oh, you came back after lunch. The last three people, the temp agency sent, didn't come back after lunch. Um, but one day after work, waiting for a ride and a hot summer day, um, I was sitting in some grass to find out my legs started burning and I looked down and they were they were my legs were covered with red fire ants and I, I swiped those ants off as quick as I could and got myself into the bar restaurant where, we, where was the meeting place and inside the restaurant I bellied up to the bar and had a, a root beer on draft and a co cliche conversation with the bartender and I had moved out west and I was looking for a new start and uh, why eyes wide open and she said well my ne my nephew is um, my son-in-law is is actually um, a group home area supervisor and so that um, that conversation led to me applying for a job at an agency that provided supports for people with disabilities out west uh, come to find out they were always hiring at that time you know turnover is unfortunately a part of the culture of support where it is that we support people and it was no different out there. Um, but what I found out there, a lot about myself, this, this first job that I took uh, reminded me that I can make a difference. And so that really was the trajectory of my career path. And um, I was fortunate enough to be able to work with somebody that is going to be singing with us today, my wife, uh, Gretchen, AKA Gretch, is my uh, term of endearment for her. She'll be joining us here soon, uh, but she also worked at the same provider that I worked for, and uh, she was a job coach and did other work within uh, within this provider. That uh, so we we had a connection there, and uh, that connection is still uh, today. We have a a big heart for the caregiving field, and um, our my current role right now. I'm in a I'm grateful to be in a position to um, lead a, a team of of uh, training professionals that our uh, that are, are really helping our local workforce provide them with the training they need to do the work and a lot of them are hopefully joining today it really is in honor of them that we're doing this concert not only our local uh, direct support professionals but anybody in a caring capacity uh, at any point in time we're either going to be caring for someone else or being cared for and we want to shine the light on that work that's being done and, and just some amazing work that's being done locally under unprecedented conditions. Helping people through this time uh, offers many challenges, but those, those of us who are involved with su providing support for people with disabilities, a lot of times they're not, they're not familiar or understanding what's happening out, outside their front door or on the media. Or, and so our caregivers are there doing a lot of the work to help them feel safe during a time of uncertainty, really uncertainty for all of us. So a lot of sacrifices are happening. Um, we're hearing stories about people, you know, uh, 14 days that they're going to remain in the same home just to protect people and not risk the spread. And uh, so we're, we're talking about unprecedented times locally and especially hard hit for those of you who are not from the Detroit area. Our local area has been hit uh, very hard and we are responding in the best way that we can. The supplies that are needed to help our caregiving workforce 
um, there's a shortage of those. And so part of my effort today, our effort today, is really to shine a light on that also. We're fortunate. The agency I've worked for uh, since 2003, Mork, uh, has an, uh, a fundraising arm called the Futures Foundation. And currently, all of their energies right now are based in trying to provide uh, supplies for our caregivers to help them do the work to help those that we're serving feel safe. So the Futures Foundation, you'll find if you joined on Facebook or YouTube, the link is there. If you have an interest in checking it out, see what they're doing. If you have an interest in donating, um, by all means, you know, think, of, think, about, uh, think about that. And really wanted to be able to shed some light on and bring awareness and um, share our gratitude for all of those direct support professionals and all of the caregivers that are out there doing, doing this work. So today we we're going to be able to celebrate that. Also wanted to uh, shed uh, a little light on some of the original songs that were written, f that I've written over the course of the last several years, um, and provide a, a little story behind each of these songs. And then uh, my wife will be joining me here in a little bit and then we'll be singing some songs that we really enjoy singing and we um, love to hear feedback so please feel free to send messages in the chat um, all those on YouTube if you want to look, uh, send messages that way we uh, we're trying to monitor those we uh, have uh, uh, my son who's also checking out YouTube for for interesting uh, comments or questions or anything that we might need to be aware of and then those on YouTube um, it, send your messages and then those on Facebook just go ahead and send them via Facebook so um, with that said uh, the first song that I wanted to play for you it's called you're my wonder and this is a song that really speaks to uh, relationship and the value of relationship we have um, in fact those of you who are on uh, Facebook you can look into the a photo album and in that photo album are the lyrics to the songs that I'll be playing, the original songs that I'll be playing for you uh, this afternoon. The first one, You're My Wonder, is a song, as I mentioned, about relationship. It's about someone being in your corner um, or you being that person that's in someone's corner and the value behind that. Uh, what we learn is that really people need at least one person in their lives, a trusting person in their lives that can help them get through some of the uh, most difficult challenges that life can can offer. So, you know, during this time, I think there's there's a lot of uh, opportunities for us to think about that. And uh, certainly those in the caregiving profession are the wonders in, in many people's lives and in many people's worlds. So um, let's get started with, with this song. Who I am, no more detail. 
This next song is um, near and dear to, to my heart. Um, it's called The Sunrise Side of Sarah. And in the role that I've had, one of the roles, one of the, the roles that um, I shared with some of the uh, team members that are maybe listening today, uh, D, Kim, um, Sheldon, Bill, um, you guys know that some of the work that we did will forever be in entrenched in our minds and Sarah Sarah was someone we got a chance to meet and uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with you know some of the institutionalization history within the United States of America um, uh, lots of hardship as a result of decisions made with regard to institutionalizing people with disabilities if you haven't checked out a video out there on YouTube uh, called Willowbrook which uh, Geraldo Rivera was actually a reporter in New York City in the early 70s that exposed some of the atrocities there. Um, that will tell you everything you need to know about what uh, some of our history, dark history, dark past included. Um, although deinstitutionalization, really Mork was spearheading that in Michigan and um, with, with those efforts, um, a lot of great things occurred. Community settings, getting people liberated to a place where they can live freely in society and not be cast away because they have a disability. Um, even though we made great progress, there's still, right, there's still a lot of work to do. And with um, the state's decision, Michigan's decision to close the last publicly funded institution in 2009, um, we ended up, um, I'm sorry, 2010, September 2010, 2009. I have to check my facts on that. Anyway, um, we, um, we were able to meet some people who were living in an institution and the place that I worked for, the group that I worked with, was responsible for helping train um, the, the professionals around the state of Michigan, clinic, clinicians and professionals, caregivers, um, in partnership with Progressive Lifestyles. We went out and did a lot of work over the course of a five-year grant. And as part of that work, we met people who were living in these institutions, who were moving out of the institutions, and um, our hope was to be able to give them the information they needed to be able to build a culture of support for the people that were coming out of the institutions. So the last over 100 people living in the institutions, we, we were training those caregivers and the professionals and the workforces supporting them. And uh, Sarah's a story that really um, is indicative of those times and some of the um, changes that we saw as a result of changing the way in which we support or provide care for other people. Um, so this song was written really in honor of her on a, her journey and the opportunity to to really look at um, closely what's going what it's going to take to help people live uh, their their true sense of themselves their lives and so this is a, a story about uh, Sarah and um, I'm very proud to be able to share this with you today and if anybody's up in the um, northern part of the state. I hope you're listening and, and uh, this is in honor of you <coughs> and the work that you did also. Um, correction on that, it was 2009 that Michigan closed the last publicly funded institution. So that's been confirmed by our confirmed by our D. Thanks D. Away 
in my tired fears Now I'm reaching out To my family, my friends And my peers The sunrise side of Sherry Shines On the sunrise side highway Smile no longer has to hide There's little left to get in its way Side of Sarah shines on the sunrise side highway. No wake filled waters, just the calmness from your quiet bay. No wake filled waters, just the calmness from your quiet bay. Hi, Sarah, I hope you had a chance to listen to that, or else the recording can get sent to you. That would mean a lot to me. <clears throat> so it's pretty cool. The work that we do has international appeal, right? This idea of helping people in this fashion, really focused on Helping them to feel safe in this world and building trust with relationship goes so far when people are uh, experiencing a life of trauma or coming to us where um, they don't trust. And so we've learned so much along the way and we have partners from across the world that we work with. And we have a conference uh, once a year. In fact, this August we were supposed to host it in Ann Arbor, but we had to cancel but we have people from around the world, uh, the international, General Teaching International Community is really a community that's trying to help figure out the best way to support people who um, are struggling. And um, it, it really reveals to people um, the essence um, and the focus of what it is that we can do in those moments, because it can be hard, right? We don't always have the answers. But this song was written really to be able to think about when we come together with really this heart vision, um, a lot of great things can happen. And so when we get a chance to get together with the international community, we, um, we end up really talking about this in, in more of a formal and sometimes informal um, format. But it's this uh, ongoing support of what it is we need to do for each other. And so this song uh, was written in honor of that and in honor of this group and in honor really of this message that we're trying to get across um, in improving humanity and improving the culture of support out there. It's called When, when Hearts Combine. <clears throat> and it's in the key of D. If not now, when is the time? You're gonna feel 
for listening out there. Hi, Catherine. Hey, Celia. Joining us on YouTube. So this next song is really um, kind of combining what this last song, this last song you just heard, thinking about how to really change, change culture. You know, we don't have to look too far, look at the headlines to see um, when people don't feel safe in this world, um, what happens? And so uh, it's playing itself out every day, right? And so I think if we start to collectively think about um, what it is that not only the people we're supporting, like today our caregivers, all of you who are doing this work to care for others, those same principles, if they were applied across the board, so to speak, so that we all really just honored each other, I learned a, a lot over these years, and, and a person that um, may or may not be listening today, um, Alex. Alex taught me a, a term that sticks with me. It's called neuro neurodiversity. It's our view of the world, our individual view of the world, based on so many factors, right? Um, but if we honor someone's view of the world, it's a great place to start. And so this song is really about that. It's honoring that starting place and then building from it. And so this song, um, I haven't mentioned John McGee, but John McGee is somebody, uh, one of the founders of some of the, the work that we are involved with in, in our caregiving professions. And um, this song was written in part to an ode to the work that he's done. Also, the title of this song has some, some importance too. In fact, um, the gentleman I just mentioned, Dr. John McGee, who's no longer with us, um, he came to visit us frequently. And one thing he told somebody living in uh, one of the homes, uh, in fact, Progressive, who's with us, uh, some, of, some of you guys are with us today. Um, he said, John came in and said, listen, you guys, a, a home is made of love and a house is made of bricks. And so it is uh, one of those things that stuck. He told that to someone living there and it stuck with him. And this young man I got to meet one day. And it was something he said to me unprompted. And uh, he was speaking to me with this, this, you know, this heart message, like that's what it is that we all need. And um, so it became a title of this song. Uh, Home is made of love, uh, house is made of bricks.
these next steps Let me know I'm safe Instead of keeping me in the dark Let me know you care about me Me and my heart appreciate everyone taking a listen to the originals that have been written um, and those really are in honor of all of those out there doing this work in the caregiving uh, profession and know that um, we are thinking about you, your unsung heroes out there for us uh, and um, know that all of the work that you're doing is very much appreciated.